Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday's edition of Morning Brews. My name, of course, is Ryan Smelt, and this morning we are going to be talking about how to think and plan strategically. So before I jump into it, I do want to let you know that this week has a theme, something new I'm trying out. We'll see how it works and whether or not I can continue to create content surrounding these themes. Uh, so the theme for this week is communication. You will notice in the show notes there is a link to an article uh, where I basically take the bullet points and then go on several rants throughout. So I do have four bullet points for you today. Number one, ask strategic questions. Two, observe and reflect. Three, consider opposing ideas. And four, embrace format training. Okay, now when it comes to thinking and planning strategically, uh, I believe this is extremely important as it relates to business. Uh, you'll notice that the link is directly to uh, HBS Harvard Business School, and the article outlines uh, several different things including what are strategic thinking skills. And then it talks about analytical skills, communication skills, problem solving skills, planning and management skills. So under how to improve your strategic thinking skills, it says to ask strategic questions. Now, if you're in business, then you know just as much as I do, that oftentimes in order to arrive at the solution for a problem, we need to ask questions uh, to help us get there. And oftentimes, uh, we could be asking questions of ourselves that we need to find answers to, or we could be asking questions of our staff. There are many times throughout the week where I am answering questions uh, with my boss or uh, the people that I have on my team in order to better understand the processes we have in place. Uh, that helps us to improve our strategies, how we approach the standard operating procedures that we have in place, and it helps provide a clear understanding of what our goals are, what the intent is, how we can better improve efficiency. So uh, asking strategic questions obviously helps improve your strategic thinking. Uh, it's also going to help you arrive at better solutions. Uh, so number two, under observe and reflect. So sometimes in the warehouse, uh, I am asking these questions. I'm trying to understand uh, maybe why something takes as long as it does. Oftentimes I'm approaching a problem. I may be trying to figure out why uh, there was a mistake that was made. And sometimes even I notice it, but I'm literally standing there watching something happen. Uh, and that I believe is part of the observe. So uh, we've asked the strategic questions. Uh, then we take a look at the different pieces of whatever our operation is and we observe and reflect. In order for me to observe, there's no better way of doing it than to find someone conducting that task or ask someone to come over and do it while I sit there and watch. I'm also thinking through my head what those questions were that I had about the process. I'm taking into consideration the fact that when I do it, it may be done differently, faster or slower than the person that I have executing at that moment, uh, and then reflect. So now we, at this point, we've asked ourselves the strategic questions. Uh, we're able to observe and reflect uh, as, as it relates to our overall strategy, uh, maybe the systems and processes we have in place for our business, or maybe uh, you're approaching this on a more specific level. So uh, it could be about a very specific uh, thing or customer or client that you're addressing, uh, whether it's 
from a more general level or you're getting very specific now, uh, you can sit and reflect on the questions that you asked, uh, what the answers to those questions were, and you can take into consideration what you observed about the systems and processes. For me specifically, uh, watching someone else do it, I may be able to identify uh, certain weaknesses or areas for improvement in the process that I may not notice if I was doing it myself. Uh, and moving on to number three, consider opposing ideas. This is one of my favorites uh, because as you'll see in the article uh, where it says once you've landed on a strategy that can help your organization reach its goals, question your assumptions, and put your hypoth hypothesis through rigorous testing. Uh, so the way that I do this is <laughs> it's kind of funny because now I'm doing this exact thing. However, instead of implementing a new process, we're re-implementing an old process. We saw much better efficiency uh, with a more broad kind of do one thing at a time assembly line approach to the process. And we got away from that as we grew and grew and grew and just kind of rolled with it. Uh, however, recently, as we continue to grow and up our numbers as far as the staff that we have on payroll, we're seeing an increase in our labor costs. And so in order to address that, I am testing the old process. And in considering posing ideas, I'm having people who have never done it before do the process test it out, see how it works, and then give me feedback on it so I can take it into consideration. And the idea behind this entire test is to see what I've always said is don't worry about the numbers, trust the process. So when we put the pressure on that process, the numbers work themselves out in the end. Uh, it's the same thing if you work in a sales role. Instead of worrying about whether or not you're closing the sale, just worry about following the step. One, two, three, four. If you're following those steps in your sales cycle, in your sales process, uh, and you do it enough times, the law of averages is going to kick in and you're going to close a sale. But if all you're worried about is hitting certain numbers, uh, then you might miss certain steps in your sales process. If all we're worried about is the numbers we're putting up on a day-to-day -day basis, then maybe we make the mistake of putting the wrong label on the wrong product or something like that. And that could uh, definitely uh, damage our efficiency, if, if not for the day, then possibly even the week. Um, and it will slow us down as a team overall because if we mislabel a thousand units, we stop as a team and go back and properly label those units to get it out the door and get it done quickly. So it's actually a lot better if we focus less on doing a thousand units in a day and focus a lot more on doing, uh, eight, say, 800 units correctly because uh, we don't go, have to go back and redo anything. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to talk about in number four, embrace formal training. Uh, so in general, I have never been a fan much of, uh, you know, meetings, uh, holding unnecessary uh, training meetings or meetings in general. Uh, however, I do believe in training. I believe that the 10 years I spent in the Army, uh, most of it was spent training. Um, if we weren't training ourselves, we were training other people uh you know tactics techniques and procedures all uh different things that would be implemented in the quote unquote of the battle and so if you have uh people on payroll if it's not just you in your company people want to grow they want to improve and they like being challenged uh, as a general rule i believe we have a pretty decent culture uh, that I have cultivated uh, in the workplace that, that we contribute to as a team. And I believe part of that is the training that I do on a regular basis. So 
Sometimes this is something that we have already seen, and some of the guys know uh, more. They're more than an expert at whatever the thing is. But if I have one new person, uh, it is good for me to uh, teach that uh, both individually and in a group setting because maybe someone needs to hear it one more time. In the example, I always use the palettes that we use. Uh, I teach how to identify a palette that we can use and how to tell if it's a bad palette and put it to the side. Uh, and some of the guys that have been there long enough know more than well enough how to identify those palettes. But the new people, I don't want to leave them by the wayside. So embrace the formal training. Make sure you conduct it uh, on a regular basis, both during the hiring and onboarding process and periodically throughout someone's uh, tenure with you and with your company. So lastly, I'm going to mention that we do have episodes uh, and our sponsors listed below. Please be sure to check them out. It's how we continue to put out free content for you, for your business needs. I hope this has been valuable and helpful for you. Uh, I look forward to putting out more and more content as uh, my schedule and time allows. And if you have not seen it or heard it yet, please check out today's episode of Business and Brews. We talked to Evolve Physical Therapy. That was a phenomenal interview. So check that out. I appreciate it. My name, once again, is Ryan Smeltz. Leave us a five-star review. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to tell your friends to subscribe as well. And I will see you on tomorrow's episode of Morning.